G'day guys, welcome to J-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to talk through a video called The Crazy Red Flag Mania in Modern Dating. This is by a channel called FBE Capital, so go and check them out, and I've linked this original clip in the video description, so go give them a like, comment, give them a bit of a push as well. Currently, social media is suffering from red flag mania due to dating apps and F-boys running circles around women. Yeah. which has resulted in so many broken and jaded souls that they are now turning every little thing into a major red flag. <laughs> major yeah. red flags in guys. 14 red flags. 10. 10 of the most common red flags to look out for when dating, part seven. What are three red flags in a guy? If they're under five, six. If he actually uses Facebook. Say if he doesn't like an outfit that you're wearing, the picture that you posted. I have a lot of these. When they're really, really close to their mother. <laughs> you go on a first date with them and it's like the best first date oh. of your life. Don't date Korean men who are good at English. Oh, when he texts me back, I'm like really happy. Red flag. And their eyebrows are not moving. They're not mirroring back some kind of expression. They're only child too. Man grooming. They're calling, they're texting. Flowers out of nowhere. Only childs, that's not even their fault. Oh, well, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like they're just like so self-centered. So when I started wow, looking- Wow, wow, wow. Very true though. So I've put, um, I've put a bunch of videos up with women talking about red flags and icks and all that stuff. Um, so icks, I hate that word, but icks saying they're things that, that gross them out or are sort of red flags in a relationship that'll turn a woman off a man. But what I've always found out was women who always talk about red flags or even when you're even out dating and, and on a date and I'll say, what are your red flags when dating? And I've always found that to be a very negative question to ask somebody when you're trying to have a positive date and then they go and say oh well it's ba 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 and straight away you're thinking yeah you've been absolutely smashed and dashed on that many times that you're to the point that you're on a date a first date with a guy or first catch up with a guy that you don't know it could be a prospective future boyfriend you never know where things are going to go you're straight up negative dobbing on yourself as to what puts you off with men because as we all know guys Women's turnoffs with men or things I don't go for or red flags or whatever you want to call it, they're based on bad experiences they've had in the past. So as the guy said, yes, you've got the Bryce's, you've got the Stevos, you've got Chang, Hawaiian, Dino over in the UK. These guys are out there just living the dream, promising girls the worlds, never delivering. And then the next guy comes along who's normal who's not like that, who actually might want to take it out and get to know them better, he has to put up with all this rubbish. So yeah, guys do ruin it too. Like I've, I'm very balanced on this channel, guys, as you'll know. Like, you know, it is a men's channel, but I do like to shoot from the hip and just say it how it is. Yeah, guys, I, I stopped doing all of that. Like I was prolific. I was bad at one point, really bad. I was absolute scumbag. Lying, saying everything I had to say, juggling women, Promising them stuff I knew I was never going to deliver on. So whatever, I'd find the I'd find the trigger point. I would use it to get some action, you know. And it was fun in the short term, but then I realised what I was doing. I was part of the problem, and I stopped. So that was like probably three or four years ago now, guys. I, I had enough of it. I was becoming basically like subhuman, like a monster. I didn't like what I was being because you're doing really bad behaviours, and you know you're impacting people. So that's why I stopped. So guys who want to know why. I don't really go monster hunting anymore. That's the reason. You know, I got somewhat of a conscience, somewhat. But that's very, very true. Men also have a huge part to play in the current situation. And yes, you can say it's not fair. It's only the top 5% or whatever numbers thrown around of guys, guys who are rooting, booting, the ones who can get girls to, to give it up, you know, short term without the guy giving any sort of commitment back. Yeah. Life's not fair, but it is, yeah, it's not fair to you that as a normal guy maybe trying to meet someone, you have to put up with all this rubbish based on what the Rises and Stevos of the world have done. But it's very true. So I, I agree with that. It isn't just women being increasingly entitled and painful. Yes, that's a huge part of it. But it's also men doing damage and then getting the women's guard ups as well. Guilty as charged. I've done it. Done it. Not proud of it. Looking into this red flag mania, I was surprised to see how many women are complaining about men having a too close relationship with their mothers, as if that is a bad thing. Number one, possibly one of the most biggest red flags of all time is if he has mummy issues. Now I get it. Yeah, I've had women say that to him before. So I'm, I'm, I'm close to my, very close to my family, my mum and 
my dad and my siblings very very close and I had a yeah I had a, a serious girlfriend at one point so it was very strange and I would say to mum on the phone or I'd hang up and say alright mum love you that was weird that was weird she said that is weird I never really understood that and I think it is that it's a jealousy thing right they don't like the fact that you're close with your mother and B, if your mother is half what switched on to female nature, which most of them are, they intuitive can tell if they don't like a woman or not. You'll be able to tell if your mom or sister likes another woman just by the way they're looking at them. Because women can't hide that shit. They can't fake it. They get worried that they're going to get exposed, and that's why they don't want you to be close to your mother. Because your mother will say something to you, and because most men or boy or men growing up and have been raised by a mother, they will take their advice about a woman potentially. They don't want that, so they'll try and turn it around and shame it. That's why they say it's a red flag. That some mother-son relationships can go a little <laughs> too far, but in most cases, mothers and sons that are close is actually a good thing yeah, and can it. even save you millions of dollars. Hakimi's divorce from his wife, Hiba Abouk, took an unexpected turn when she filed for more than half of the Moroccan footballer's property and fortune. During the court proceedings, it was revealed that Hakimi had no property or assets under his name. The reason? He had transferred his entire fortune to his mother long before the good, divorce. Good, good. As men, we don't care if a girl has a great relationship with her father or is very close with her mother. That is perfectly fine. Maybe That is a very good thing. That is an absolute positive that someone's close and gets along with their parents. Authority figures in their life. Because if they don't, and I've had this, this experience with women who don't respect their father or their mother or never even have any sort of family values, like they got to 18, fucked off out of home, whatever it is, they're not going to respect you. They're not going to respect you as a man and see you as someone as authority in the house. They can't respect their dad and they hate their dad or they say things about their dad. That's their dad. That's the person that brought them into this world. Yes, there are occasions where that is warranted. There are deadbeat dads out there, scumbags, stego dads, but not all dads. And you do hear a lot of women ragging their dad out. So if they're ragging their dad out, what chance have you got? Even a must. Since if she's daddy's girl, then usually that means that her father spoiled her and is very protective of her. It is actually when the dad is not around or doesn't show any interest in her, when all hell breaks loose and you get some serious daddy yeah. issues, aka stripper poles and triple digit body counts which usually leads to a very jaded 30 or 40 something claiming that all men are toxic for dating yeah. younger women. As a woman in her 30s who's been in New York for 10 years, it's really hard to watch toxic men continuously <laughs> date younger and younger. Why do they do that? Well, there's a- Because they're sexier. And look, if, if a guy's just straight up looking for action and he, can, and he can do it, and that's his preference, he's gonna take it. That's just the reality. An average looking 19 year old is better than a 39 year old. It's just, it's just biology. If it comes down to actually dating them, um, I don't know, I'm mixed on that. Because I think, yes, some women who are in their late 20s, uh, 30s and whatever, similar age range to myself, they can be really good. Um, you know, a bit more experienced in life, yada, yada. But also on the inverse of that, they can also be very, very abrasive, opinionated, um, prickly, the list goes on, like just not dateable. But then a lot of the younger women, they haven't been through or made the same bad decisions that some of these older women have. And so they're a lot more fun, pleasant and carefree to be around. Why, why else would a girl go on, on TikTok complain about that? Because now her time's over for the guys that maybe she was getting with 10 years ago. Well, she's been replaced now, like Leo, like a Leonardo DiCaprio type situation. I find it hilarious because that's why I do a lot of TikToks, guys. I find like TikToks are like a window into the female psyche. They bear all on camera for the world to say you don't think twice about it. Who's watching it? A few reasons. Number one, men are gross. Now, whenever I see these types of women who have lost all hope, I just love to dive into their dating history to see what exactly happened and more precisely, what type of self-destructive delusional behavior they yeah. engaged in Spot to on. get to this point. I know I have sent a lot of people with my three dates, one night video. So today we're going on five dates and not just in Brooklyn, we're venturing out. <laughs> so she has turned dating into a game slash yeah. content creation tool just so she can piss off people online. Hmm, I wonder where things went wrong. Now, before we dive into this mess of a dating history, I'd like to quickly turn to a frequently mentioned red flag by women which is the whole not paying on the first date issue. Oh, yeah. So the number seven red flag is that he doesn't pay on the first date. Now, if this was me, I wouldn't go out with him again. 
Now I agree that if you are a traditional woman, then it's fair to expect a guy to pay on the first date. However, and this is where so many women mess up, you actually have to be traditional yourself if you want a guy to do those traditional things. I went in hard on this topic in my other video, why men don't approach women anymore, so check that one out later, it's a good one. But the main problem here is that you have an entire society that wants to turn masculine men into feminine soy boys and then complain that men aren't in their masculine energy anymore. This shows that he's not in his masculine yeah, he's not using masculine because it's a shaming tactic. Well, you're not masculine if you don't pay for me. I, I do agree. I think even even 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, and I was going on dates um, when I was out there doing all of that, I actually never thought twice about paying on the first date. But I definitely did a few years ago when I was back on the scene after I got uh, separated and divorced because you come to realize that women are multi-dating. They're not just dating you. If you know a woman is just dating you or one man at a time, I see no problem with, with paying, right? But if they're going out with guys every week or they've got many different things happening, guys are talking to them attention, you're not getting any value for spending that money. You're just paying a fee for maybe having a chance at some attention from a female. Like, it's a form of, um, you know, the oldest um, occupation in the world. That's the way I see it these days. I never. I used to be. I used to be. I used to turn up at the door with the flowers and the heart-shaped chocolate box. You know, it would be nice if the world was actually wholesome like that. But it's not. Women are not wholesome. These women that are complaining about men not paying on the first date, it's because they go on so many dates, and if they have to pay, then it actually starts costing them quite a bit of money. Women are cheap. I always say this to people: women are the cheapest creatures on earth. Do you ever hear a guy saying, oh, the girl didn't pay, didn't want to pay on the first date, so I had to pay scumbag chick? Because we know, we, we, we know as men, we're going to have to spend some money along the line, but women want everything for free. I, I once went out with a girl, and I went out with her for a few years. I paid for everything, holidays, all sorts of shit, you know, go to, um, you know, holidays away, nothing, nothing overseas or anything like that, but locally in the country here. I remember once, I just wanted to test her out and I asked her to buy me a coffee from a um, good old Muffin Break. It was in one of those shopping centers. She bought it because I went into a shop and she didn't have my... I used to just give her money and shit. I thought I was Mr. Big Dog. I learned pretty soon not to do that. But she bought it. I said, oh, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. She goes, don't, don't get used to it. Like, don't effing get used to it. Stared me straight in the face. I was like, I can't believe this. Like, four years, I've probably spent... Tens of thousands of dollars on this bird. She bought me back then. It would have been three dollars fifty or something for a coffee. So women are the, the point I'm trying to make is women are the cheapest creatures on earth. If they're arguing about men not buying them shit, doesn't that make them cheap just by virtue of saying that? Especially when they're working full time. Okay, if, you, if they don't work or it was back in 1950 and they didn't have the earning capacity that men have, sure, it makes sense to me. If a guy's making five times what they make, but when making a lot more than men now or the same or more especially in professional environments. Well, they complain about not paying. They don't have the same buying power. So it's just cheap, being cheapskate. That's my take on it. I'll, you never be able to convince me anything different. I've always thought this ever since I sort of had a realization probably when I was like 20 or 21 years old. And then I never did stuff like that ever again. Yeah, I did dates here and there, but not full-blown leading with the wallet stuff. So guys, when I tell you things, I've done all this shit before. or made all the mistakes masculine energy and he doesn't have that protector provider mentality it's a very clear indicator of that and that he's not willing to make even a small investment no of course he's not willing to invest because there's nothing to invest in yeah. you've got women out here scheduling multiple dates a night mm -hmm. and going on as many as 10 or even 15 dates a month the only new york city dating hack you need to know is three dates one night 5 30 6 45 eight o'clock you do not owe these guys more than 45 minutes of your time but it's a volume game and then some just say Fuck it and go on a new date every single day i'm going on 28 dates in the month of february i'm 31 i'm very single i live in new york city the role what does very single even mean like you know how are you single or not very single i never understood that uh, very single what does that mean like you're just ready just for action like what does that what does that mean someone please explain that to me in the comments is 28 dates but there can be certain days where i go on multiple dates and it doesn't necessarily have to be 28 different men although maybe it's gonna be
yeah, I'm not investing in that. If I'm going to invest, I'm doing so in myself. And a great way to do that is with today's sponsor, Teach Hanley. Good with Teach Hanley, you get access to a great skincare line that is uncomplicated to use. And uh, if you click great fake on. red flag that especially mod- All right, before we start the back end of the, of the show, guys, I'll uh, skip through his um, paid advertisement that he got. Good on him. He's got, a big, he's got a big channel. He's getting paid segments. So that's one thing I won't do, guys. You can mark my words now. I won't do paid advertisements in my videos. So on that note, if you're enjoying the channel, um, you're enjoying this video and my take on things, please subscribe. Uh, and the best way to help me out so I don't have to do sponsorships is just to watch my videos through to the end. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's free for you. And that's the way that YouTube gives me a little bit of pocket money. And if you do want to support the channel, um, check out the Patreon link in the description. All right, let's get on with it. Modern women like to drop is the whole he wants exclusivity too fast. They are asking for exclusivity off the bat. Relationships take time to grow. If someone is trying to lock you down too soon, it's a sign that they have a wound at play. And it's 60 <laughs> to 90 days before you decide to commit. 60 to 90 days? Are you crazy? Please drop a like on the video if you think that modern women want to be treated like girlfriends but still act as if they're single. And comment down below what you think. So women expect <laughs> the guys to get them me. out every week, call them and text them, listen to their problems and struggles, invest time and money in them, be there for them emotionally for three straight months, all while they still get to bang other dudes. Yeah. Nah, f that. That is absolute. Yeah, and spend a bunch of money and have a bunch of stress because a lot of guys who might not have the option, they might get with a girl who they think is a little bit higher than put them on the pedestal. They know she's out running around and doing whatever, but you accept it because you feel like you can't do any better. And if she gets away, you're not going to do better than her or another girl might not come around. So a lot of guys put up with this bullshit because she's being honest about it up front. And yeah, if they're honest about it and you take it on, that's on you. Don't go spending money stressing and having your stomach twisting when she's not answering her phone. You know what she's doing. If a woman's not answering their phone or answering text, texts pretty quick, what do you think they're doing? She's on her back, legs in the air. Women are never too far away from their phones. Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah, sorry. They text you back the next day. I had this happen to me. They text you back the next day. Oh, yeah, my phone went flat and I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. When has a chick's phone ever been flat? Well, come on. Absolutely insane. And it's the biggest reason for why modern women are not only single, but are also constantly getting used for hookups and get damaged by F-boys. Because no traditional guy is going to put up with that, and if your biggest concern in dating is the ability to keep sleeping with other men, then you are not a serious option or wifey material. There's absolutely nothing wrong with expecting exclusivity in the early stages of dating if you are dating to find a long-term partner. But this just shows you the utter hypocrisy in these so-called red flag videos, because what they're really doing is showing that modern women want to have their cake and eat it too. Which brings it. Let's be fair here, because guys, I want to be balanced. He's saying they're all doing it. Now he's showing a whole bunch of Instagram, TikTok sluzzers. Not all girls do this stuff, but it is common. It does. It does happen a lot, especially women who are on TikTok and watch this bull crap. I've had this said to me to my face that women blatantly juggling guys and girls from uh, off, off Bumble and Tinder and all that have told me that they actually are doing this. So it, it's very common, but not, they're all not all doing it. But yes, it's a lot of them. So you should be absolutely aware of it. And that's why I think many guys are aware, especially that channels like mine and many others that have been around for a lot longer than me, have called this stuff out. So guys know they have the information at hand to make decisions. You're not getting into situations that are going to cause you a lot of pain and hurt and make you even more bitter and, and jaded and, and, and make you even a super red pill extremist. As I said, guys have asked me, am I red pill? Guys, I would say... I've always uh, thought in a way that's probably aligned to the red pill. I wouldn't say I'm an extremist red pill person. No, I've always thought that way. And whenever I've gone off script with it, like when I got married, I knew. I knew I shouldn't have done that. But I went and did it. And I paid for that pretty dearly. But am I red pill? No, I would say red pill aware, guys. I, I like to see balance. So red pill aware, but open to other ideas and anecdotal evidence and that's why in my videos i talk from my experience i'm not saying this is the way it is because i've noticed if red pill black pill uh blue pill whatever pill it is it's this ideology and that's it and nothing can stray out of the boundaries and if you say something that's out of the boundaries of the doctrine that's generally prescribed then you're disregarded or you're a simp or you're whatever it is right 
So guys, I'm very pill aware, but I live life according to my own rules and based on my own experiences. I don't create or follow red pill rules or black pill stuff or anything like that. But I'm very cynical and I'm very ruthless um, when it comes to women. So that's maybe why a lot of you guys have said, are you red pill? Maybe I am naturally, but I wouldn't say that, hey, I'm that label. I don't know, but I don't like labels, I guess to the very well-known Instagram red flag of men liking sexy photos of other women. You know, him liking pictures of girls in bikinis. If they're liking these photos? Okay, that's a whole nother one. Where other people can see that he's liking it. I think that is very disrespectful and I think that would be a big red flag as well. Now, first of all, posting a sexy photo is obviously way worse than just liking one. Especially <laughs> if you're just scrolling through your feed and a sexy photo pops up cute puppy like awesome ferrari 250 gt swb extremely sexy photo definitely like then who cares it's the same as saying a particular actress model or musician is hot it means nothing but going out of your way to take dozens of half naked photos finding the perfect pose to then post the best one online for everyone to see and generating dozens of comments and DMs about your body and wanting to meet up? No, that is actually the red flag. And the hypocrisy here is that somehow not wanting a guy to simply click the like button is perfectly normal, but not wanting your girl to show her ass and tits to the world that is controlling and toxic yeah, behavior. Yeah, I just to that. He's super jealous from the get-go, um, telling you like, you know, you shouldn't wear that or why'd you post that? Say if he doesn't like it. Exactly right, because they don't want you to cut off their dopamine hit. They still want you to provide everything, give them that, that hit. They want both sides of the fence. It's like when guys, um, they want a nice nurturing girl, they get her and they still go and bang sluts on the side. Well, it's the same It's the same thing. You want your cake and they want to eat it too. And it's a lot of these chicks. And they want to do the whole, oh, it's not okay to shame you. What, they call it slut shaming. I've always think that's the funniest word. They say, oh, you're slut shaming. So what, are you calling yourself a, a slut? Oh, I, I, don't victim blame. Oh, I didn't have any control over it. Oh, you know. But let me get back to the red pill point, guys. So as I said, I'm aware, as you can tell on my channel, I don't like labels and I don't like telling people what to do. So people go, do you recommend marriage? Do you not recommend marriage? When it comes to that, guys, I give you information based on my experiences and, and um, it's stuff from social media to sort of talk out, bring out talking points. But that information is for you to take and make your own decisions. Be aware of what happens out there. It's not everybody. Not everybody is like this. And so I think this, this, what this video really put, call, calls out is it's social media as well. So you get a lot of these channels, red pill channels, black pill channels, whatever you want to call them, PUA channels. And a lot of stuff is filled with extremist sort of hate messaging. I'm not saying there are, you know, oh, gee, man, oh, yeah, yeah. there is a lot of all women this, all women that, all women that. As soon as I always say this, as soon as you start using all, it's like we, it's like the, the the male equivalent of women saying all men are trash. Not all women do these things. A high enough population of them do them, and that's why I make you guys aware of it through my experiences. But also in life, I've come across many, many, many fantastic women, and I think that's what I want to say. This is more highlighting some of the bad shit that goes on out there on both sides of the fence, so you can be aware of it. But also saying, don't swallow these pills, whatever color it is, blue, red, black, and just take that for what it is and be extremist on it and 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 hate, be full of hate. Because that's gonna hold you back in life too. So they're my thoughts, guys. If people have asked me that question, that's my answer to it. Um, it's just, the answer is I'm me. I say things the, the way that I see them and, and through my experiences, I don't put a color on it. That's probably the best way of saying it. Anyway, it's enough of a rant. Let's play this one out. Outfit that you're wearing, the picture that you posted. I definitely think social media can lead to a very toxic relationship. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Anyways, moving on to the next so-called red flag that I would even call borderline psychotic behavior, and that is wanting full access to your phone. The number one red flag in a relationship. Ask your partner if you can check their phone. And if they say no, it's personal, it's a huge red flag. How about just letting... I agree with that one because being someone who has done 
you know, juggled women and lied to women and done all that shit in the past. Yeah, I, absolutely. If a girl got access to my phone, that would have blown the lid off everything. So absolutely, I, I think that is probably the only real good red flag that they've said. But it goes to women, so you ask a woman to give you her phone, it's like Pandora's box. There's going to be some sort of secrets in there you're going to find. You, some things you're probably not going to want to see most of the time. You go into her Facebook, you go into her Snapchat, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp messages. I would be very surprised if most women had a full clean, clean record on there. Especially when they're seeing and talking to other men or talking like it's supposed to be dating someone and exclusively. Are they exclusive? I don't know, because lots of times there have been occasions where I know women that are in relationships and they still message me every day on Facebook wanting attention and shit. Happens a lot. I know women that are married that were doing that after they got married. And I was like, no, nah, I can't talk to you anymore. You're fucking married. I'm like, bug off. So yeah, the whole phones. I think phones are really, um, I think ever since the advent of the smartphone, I think for both men and women, but mostly for women too, and some guys who can, it's just become like this tool that makes all your dreams come true in terms of variety, you know, using apps and having the reach and everything you can with contacting people in a split second. I think it's really ruined the fabric of people getting to know each other genuinely. And that's why we, there's so many videos like this and the ones that I make getting made because I can't say it getting any better. I can't. I don't say degrading worse, um, especially as you sort of, um, you have guys that are angry at women, and, and rightfully so. You got a lot of women who are over entitled, uh, wanting a lot, not providing much back. So you can understand why a lot of guys are in that boat. Because if you could have said to me, what do you think the percentages of guys and girls who who's ruining dating? I'm going to say it's probably twenty percent from men, maybe ten percent, and the rest is from women. All right, that, that, that's my honest appraisal of that. I know many guys who just be happy to have a nice girlfriend, would be a fantastic guy. Um, but, you know, they they struggle. They can't find somebody because then the women want something that doesn't exist because they live off, you know, the ideals of men that are on Instagram or in movies and stuff like that. Like, it's just out of control now. All right, I'm just going to play this one out, gents people live i mean the whole if you have nothing to hide argument is the same dumb argument that politicians make when they want to probe every inch of your life and i think it's absolutely hilarious that this argument comes from the same people who can't seem to shut up about the importance of boundaries we already live in a world where corporations and governments want to control your every move see your every thought and dictate everything you say and do so why the hell would you want to invite this into a relationship these women shouting out red flags are constantly using the words trust and boundaries without even understanding what those mean. I 100% trust my mother who even has partial access to my finances and I gave her 10% of my business. I haven't gone full Hakimi yet but maybe someday I will. However, I still don't give her access to my phone nor do I want access to hers. Just let people have that last piece of personal space since Big Daddy Elon is already firing up the Neuralink which means that pretty soon people will be able to plug in their brains into a shared network. And, and then I guess I'm going to end the video on this point because I'm just going to go down a whole other rabbit hole. This Neuralink thing, there will be people lining up. There will be a waiting list of people to plug their brains in the computers and turning themselves into half a cyborg. Like the general public, fuck. What's, you can see what's, where we're going to, we're going to end up in cyberpunk if you guys know what cyberpunk is. That's where our world is going. You can just see it, the writing on the wall. Something out of Blade Runner or something like that. You know, people signing up for, for being augmented by technology. Imagine you got something like that in your brain. There's no secrets then from anybody. There's no independent thought. There's no, anyway. But the, as I said, the people that are probably going to sign up for that are the, the guys and girls in the dating uh, market who are reckoning it for everybody. All right, guys, on that note, Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end if you have, and I'll see you in the next one.